So this passage one, it's a literary narrative passage, it's also a dual passage. There's one dual passage per test. So prose fiction literary narrative is more inference, it's more story-based. So you get several strategies you can do on this one. Read and answer if you have time. That's what I always recommend if you have time to read and answer. Google summary if it helps you to remember what you are reading. Write one to three words out to the side of a paragraph to say what you just read. And map and answer. You can do it on the first passage if you just want to answer the questions with line numbers, but then you're going to be skipping some significant portions. We're going to do passage A first. There's only two questions in passage A. And remember, one of the strategies could be Google summary, where you write one to three words to say what you just read. So here's my Google summary. I wrote bird, to describe the first one, no life, Antarctica, fly, talks about the bird flying, the bird is gone, the memory of the bird, the behavior of the bird, and then home, they're comparing that behavior. In this passage, there are five questions that have line numbers in them, and that is a good strategy for some of the passages to do the questions with line numbers in them first. However, in the dual passage, I would do passage A, then passage B, and so it's diminishing returns to just do the ones with the line numbers. Number two, according to passage A, snow petrels typically spend much of the year doing what? So we marked this in our behavior paragraph, and it says they spend much of the year at the sea breeding. Then they fly 200 miles inland to reunite with their mates and scratch out nest. Back and forth, they fly from land to ocean. So they are at sea, except when they fly back and forth between land and sea. Choice F. So for passage B, if you're going to Google summary, I'll show you what mine was. So I did harsh and birds, the harsh conditions and the bird that's described. It's part of that harsh conditions in paragraph one. Paragraph two, I just said, wow, seems like the author was all struck with the majesticness of the landscape origin of the bird. And then the bird is gone. That was it. Number three, the main purpose of the first paragraph is to do what? So is it A, provide background about wells? No, that's not what the whole passage is about. It's about birds. B, indicate the narrator's fear the day is too windy for well sightings. Again, this is mostly about the bird, and so it's not B. Establish a setting for the narrator's experience while well watching. Yes, the narrator is well watching, and then there's a bird. So C. Uh, and it's not D, they're not contrasting well behavior and migrant bird behavior. So that one's out. So your answer is C. When did the narrator recognize the tiny thing was a willow wobbler? So we see that it's going to be the last sentence, that second paragraph. I put down my binoculars and turned my head and two inches away from my face, perched on my left shoulder was, shoulder, was a willow wobbler. So J, when the narrator turned his head to see the bird on his shoulder. As it is used in line 77, the word lifted most nearly means. So it says, perhaps it was the bird that sang along the railways, cutting at the back of my house this spring and lifted my journeys to work. So that's just a way to say it, it cheered me up. It, it made me happy. So D. Number six, when the narrator of passage B says, every square inch had its drama. He most nearly means what? And so we see that in line 53, and we describe this as harsh, right? Because the water is rising, it goes back and forth over the sea to work on smaller and smaller patches until every square inch had its drama. So until none of the water was smooth and calm. It's harsh. So G. Number seven, according to passage B, the rainbow clouds are caused by. So in this one, you have to find it. It doesn't give you a line number. And we see it around line 64, these fleeting rainbow clouds. And it says, its back broke, meaning the well's back broke the surface, and it blew, and the sun caught its breath. So sunlight shining through the well's exultation. So A.
Number eight, one element of the description of the bird encounter that is prominent in A but absent in B. So we can process of eliminate the narrator's direct physical contact with the bird. That happened in passage B, not passage A. The passage A author did not have direct physical contact. The narrator's contemplation of the differences. Well, we know that, that we, we examine that in question one, and that happens in passage one, but not passage two, so it's G. And we'll eliminate H and J also because H happens in passage B and J happens in both path passages. So G. Number nine, the perspective from which the passages are told can best be described as. If we glance at our answers, we can see we're looking at past or present tense. So let's look at passage A first. Passage A says, this is Antarctica. It has been 43 days. The petrol blends. So that is present tense. So we can eliminate B because it talks about past tense, and we can eliminate D because it says passage A is in past tense. Now let's look at B. Passage B says, I was crossing. The, the two miles of water were below me. I turned my head. That's past tense. So passage A is in present tense, and passage B is in past tense. So your answer is C. Number 10, which quotation from passage B most clearly resembles passage A, line 17 to 19? So 17 to 19 is here. It says, the subtle shift of the wing, the snow petrel charge a new course, evaporating into the milky soup that surrounds us. It is gone. So which one describes the bird leaving? Which of the choices? That's going to be choice J. A second later, either the bird realized it had landed on the wind whipped wind whipped it from my shoulder and it let itself be lifted into the air out to the side of the boat so it is leaving in that passage as well so your answer is j okay reach out if you have any questions we will uh end with our silly joke what do you say if someone is angry in antarctica that they have a bad latitude <laughs> have a good day